Okay, so good morning. Hi! Or good afternoon, or whatever time you're watching this. So, I want to keep it in an angle so you can see what I'm doing. I'm learning as I go how to videotape myself or how to film myself drawing. Um, and once again, I have not really planned out this project well or this video well. We're just going to do it. And that's part of the adventure of being an artist for me, is just doing stuff. And sometimes making boo-boos. But then we learn from the boo-boos. I love learning from making mistakes. That's where you become better and better and better at doing things. It's not from getting it right from the first time, or the tenth time, or the fiftieth time. It's practice, 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 practice. Doing, 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 doing. You know, I watch a lot of videos of artists who they do every line perfect the first time. Or that's what they try and tell you. And that's, that's not true. Getting it right the first time has taken hours and hours and hours to get to that point. We've been drawing characters on a, uh, from a book that, or a book series I've been developing for 13 years. So I know how to draw them. I don't draw them right the first time every time, whether it's on video or sitting at my little drawing desk here. As we've seen in, a, in the other videos I've made, sometimes I make them too big, sometimes I have to reshape them. That's, that's part of being an artist. It's part of learning and it's a part of perfecting your, your, your craft as an artist and who you are as a person. It's making mistakes and learning whether it's reading or doing math. None of us read well our first time picking up a book. Or even five years in, we find words that don't make sense and we have to look them up and we don't know how to pronounce them. And it's okay. Doing math is difficult and not everyone has to be, or it, not everyone is good at math. We have to try to read, we have to try to do math, but not everyone's going to grow up, grow up and be a mathematician. But we should learn the basics so we have that is a tool for us. Reading is a tool, math is a tool, art is a tool that we can use. So we don't give up because it doesn't come out perfect, as you've seen. Sometimes things come out wonky. Wonk Sorry, it's my word. I love that word, wonky. Um, sometimes th things come out wonky, but we just keep trying. And we keep having fun at it. Like reading, or like learning to kick a ball and play soccer, which I was never able to play. Or riding a bicycle, which I still... I, I enjoyed for a little while, but not really. Um... I like walking. Walking is, is one of my favorites. And even when I'm walking, when I'm taking long walks by myself with my dog Bugsy, I get lost. But we learn how to be not lost by just doing it. I'm not saying go into the woods and get lost because that would be really dumb and dangerous. When I'm walking, I have a compass. I have my phone. I have water. I'm not suggesting anyone go into the woods and do that. Excuse me. Okay, this is coming out sideways. What I'm suggesting is everything is like going into the woods and getting lost. But we always have someone to help us learn how. We always have a mentor or we always have a teacher or we always have a friend that helps us figure it out. Okay? So that said, we're going to go into this project. Um... Sorry, there was a truck out front. Um, we're going to go into this project, and I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. Well, I kind of know, but we're just going to figure it out as we go. I do kind of know. I want some characters flying in the kite, because we're going to add to the pieces that we've already made. So we're going to take a character that we know. We've done Dixie twice. So we've done Dixie twice. We're going to leave Dixie the, to the side this time. We've done Max. But let's take Max, because we've practiced and done him before. Let's do Max, and we're going to add two more characters to him. We're going to add Jack and, oh, I know, um, Joel. Whoops. 
<laughs> See, even writing's an adventure. I got it wrong. It won't wonky. Why there's a lot of noise outside? So we're going to do Joel, Jack, and Max. And we may do them all on one piece of paper, most likely not, because it, it, my head doesn't work well that way. Because we'd have to, to me, in my mind, if I use one piece of paper for all three, they have to be perfect. We do want to make sure that they're all about the same size. Let's just see what happens. Now that I've said I won't, let's just see what happens. Oh, there is a lot of noise going on outside. There's a rumble. All right, ready? Let's draw, let's draw Max again. Max is a turtle. He has a shell, so he's going to be kind of wide. All right? It looks like maybe we might do this all on a piece of paper, but again, we don't have to. We don't worry about it. This is an adventure. This is how we learn. So let's actually, we're going to have Max's head tilted up. The pencil's not very dark, so we're going to... Okay, Max's head is an oval. His body is basically a long square, like a, it's a rectangle. Oops, I don't want it that high. I want his neck up. When he's standing up, so I want him a little bit thinner, so more of a long square or a rectangle. His legs. Are rectangles. Okay. Oops. Excuse me, Max. He's going to have a neck that's coming out of the shell. It's kind of like a triangle a little bit. And his arm is just like his legs. It's a rectangle, only without an end over there, sort of. Now he... He's going to be holding something, and we'll get to it in a minute. So we're going to do two lines like that, and another oval. And there's Max. Now we're going to draw Joel. And Joel is a squirrel, and I don't have an example of him out here, I think. Let's see if I can find him. Those are illustrations I did for my grandson, uh, Max, and his mummy. In here somewhere is Joel. Well, there's Joel with his mummy, or his parent. That's baby Joel with his parent. There's a tree that Joel lives in. There's Joel's bed as a baby. Let me see, there's a the sky. Maybe we'll keep that. Oh, look at you know my stuff. That's the house that Max grew up in. It's a teapot. Teapot with a I don't know, a sugar dish on top, I guess, and a couple of teacups in the background. And they've got a balcony. And there's their bath house. Let's see. Let's see. Come on. Where is he? Huh? Okay. There's Joel in a boat with my character Jimmy. I have no idea where Joel is. So we're just going to... Wait a minute. Let's look one more place. There's Joel's grown-up house that I drew. That's the old Max. Let's see. Ooh, there's another reading tent. We did a reading, reading teepee the other day, but there's a reading tent, and we can do that at another time. Oh, so much stuff. 
There's the tree that Joel's house sits in. It goes like that. <laughs> well, where's a picture of him, though? Oh, there's Dixie's house. Oh, wow, this is an old one. With coffee all over it and stuff. Hmm. There's Jimmy and Max sitting in the reading tent. I was thinking about doing that the other day. All right. Oh, look, there's Dixie on May Day. That's from a book called uh, Potluck Extravaganza, and it's all about May 1st, May Day, which is coming up. Oh, my. They have a lot of stuff. A lot of little drawings. Oh, I was looking for those. Nope, no Joel. All right, we're just gonna give it a try. We're just gonna go ahead. That was the original Max. Max, right there. His own teddy bear and, and his parent. His parent. I'm not clear. If, it doesn't matter that it's mummy or daddy or grandma or grandpa. This is the person who's, or the uh, character that was taking care of him. But this is no longer Max. This is Max. Named after my grandson. All right, anyway, let's go right ahead. So Joel is a squirrel. And let's see if I can get this right. God, I've got to have some reference to him somewhere. Ugh. Now, there's an old drawing of him, so we're going to start there. We're going to start right there. Joel is an adventurer when he gets older. He loves to... He loves to sail... He loves to camp. He has a lot of tools in his toolbox, so he knows how to do things like sail. Oh, uh, like sorry, like knit. Excuse me. He's based on a knit and crochet, so he can make his own sweaters. Joel is obviously a boy. It's a boy's name, and I did that on purpose. Because knitting is not supposed to be something that boys can do or boys learn. It's for some reason it's always it has been, not always, but it it's been considered a girl's hobby. And when I was growing up, oh let's sorry, I'm just drawing and I'm not paying attention. Joel is a Oval. He has two triangles. Sorry about that. I'm just yammering. Okay. Joel is an oval. Just like, just like Max, Joel has an oval head. We're going to draw his body. I don't want him too dumpy. I want him too hunched over. Sorry, I'm kind of figuring this out as we go. So we're going to come down with two lines like that. We're going to make a shape like this, like on, on an N. Like on an N or an M. Or like the beginning of a rainbow almost. Then we'll do the other side. His little feet will come out like that. So we've got another rectangle right there. Then we'll come out like this. So it's another, they're actually rounded rectangles. See that? And his hands. You know what? I don't think I want his hand. One of his hands has to be coming out a little bit further. Or actually, let's put them both out further. 
So we're going to draw his arms. And his arms are just two sticks. We're going to draw two circles. And I happened to put mine over his knee. Because that's what that is. That N or M coming up, that's basically his knee coming down to his foot. Okay? His ears are like two round, sorry, two round triangles on top of his head. See that? Just two round triangles, round dish. And then his hat is kind of like another oval. with a brim. He's wearing a ski hat. He's wearing a, either a felt or a knitted ski hat that he's made, and he wears it all the time. And sometimes I put glasses on him, so he looks a little bit older, even though he's not. He's the same age as everybody else. Ooh, we didn't give uh, Max an eye. Let's, let's give Max an eye. And I'll tell you what these guys are going to be doing in a little bit. They're going to be flying kites. So that'll be fun. Now, there's not enough room for me to draw Jack here. And I was telling you about Joel. One of, his, um, one of the things that he learned how to do, and somebody showed him, because it's not something you learn on your own, is how to knit. He can knit and he can crochet. And when I was growing up, for some reason it was considered um, girly to knit. And so when they call it girly, it means that it's not important, or this is what it used to mean, is that it's not important, it's kind of silly, and it's a hobby, even though people love having knitted sweaters. Now when my dad was growing up, when my dad was growing up, and he was very, very old, he was born in 1910. He was very old when he and my mom had me. 1910. Actually, he was 53, younger than me. But when he was growing up, men and boys learned how to knit, crochet, and how to do needlepoint. Look up needlepoint or ask someone, what is needlepoint? It's sewing, which is another skill they learned. Needlepoint is making pictures with thread. So they all knew how to knit, crochet, do needlepoint, and sew. So they could be self-sufficient and make their own clothing. They could make their own sweaters, their own hats, their own mittens, their own gloves. And big, burly men, big, burly Fishermen, who were stronger than strong, would sit on the ships all day long because they were out to sea. At that point, they would be out to sea for months or even a year, fishing um, before, well, anyway, fishing. My great uncle, my father's uncle, used to go on a whaling ship. He was actually a sea captain. And... Uh, they would sit on the deck when they were bored and knit themselves sweaters. These big burly men on these old ships who had to be stronger than strong would sit and make themselves sweaters. How it became um, something uh, that's considered silly, I don't know, but I think it's just another tool to have and it makes you more self-sufficient. So Joel can knit, and I have pictures of him somewhere around here knitting. But the next character we're going to build is Jack. And we're going to have Jack... We're going to have Jack looking the other way. Jack is a bunny rabbit. Jack is also a little angry. He's an angry little bunny. 
And that's one of the things I love about him. He has his reasons for being angry. So it's an oval. There's his eye. It's just a circle, just like on Joel and Max. But I put that mark down because that means that he's angry. He's, maybe he's not angry today. Let's change our minds. Stop that. The lamp's making noise. Let's change our minds. He's not angry today. They're flying kites, so he's happy. We're going to draw this line for his body, because we're not going to really see a lot of his, his actual body, because uh, Jack wears a hoodie. He wears a sweatshirt, which is something I used to wear, and I'd pull it, put the hood over my head so I could hide. We're giving Jack two ears. Watch. And it's two ovals mixed with a triangle kind of idea. That's it. It's two lines. That's all it is. Now we're going to draw, we're going to go over here, just draw another oval for his paw. And watch, I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about where they're placed because it's all going to be fine. His other paw is just going to be a square. That's it. Now coming off the back, why don't we do this? We're going to draw two lines on the other side of that center line, and this tells us where his body is going, the angle of it. We're going to draw a line here for the ground. But we're going to start drawing his sweatshirt because we don't really see his body. So there's the hood. It's a triangle. Let's see. What do I want to do? We're going to do, let's see, for his left arm because he kind of has it at an angle. Oh, I've got his arm up too high. Oh, no, that's his hoodie. Never mind. He's got a shoulder, so we're going to come down. See what I mean? I don't get it right the first time, and I've been drawing this for 13 years. We're going to draw that down a little bit. We're going to have his arm coming down like that. I didn't learn to knit till I was in my, till I was almost 40, so I was an adult. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead, but what I did was I gave him a collar, and that tells me the direction, too, of his body. So that's just a triangle. There's his shoulder, his arm is two lines, two lines for his collar. And those could stay, or they could disappear. Because that's just how we do. Let's see. Let's draw his leg. And like Joel, his leg is going to come out a little bit. That line indicates his knee. That leg. That line indicates his his leg. And there's his foot. So it's just another oval. Oval. We're going to have another line coming out like this to his knee, down to his leg. And another oval. You got a bunny rabbit. That's going to be his sitter, his little sitter in the front. We're going to draw a line across, because that's where his hoodie is. There's his hoodie. There's the hood. I think I'm going to take this hand, which is kind of hanging down. I had it as an oval. We're going to make it a little bit wider than I originally had it, more of a square. Okay. 
I'm going to take his nose, bring it down. I think I'm going to move his eye to the front just a little bit. See how I made a line for his nose? We had an oval. Now it's a line, sharp line. Brought his eye up. The front of the oval, we're just going to cut off right there. Like that. And I started to think about his jaw line. His jaw line. There he is. His, there's his jaw. Oops. It's the under part of his chin, rather, leading to his jaw. There we go. All right, we got it. Now let's just ink them in. Here, we'll start with Jack since he was the last one we did. We'll start at his ears. You can start anywhere you like, but I'm going to start at his ears and work my way down. Again, the lines don't have to be perfect. I have a fancy pen. I have a brush pen. So I can make super skinny lines or fat lines. Super skinny lines or fat lines. Our lines don't have to be perfect. We can change our mind and make them fat. I happen to have a fancy brush pen. You might just have a regular ballpoint pen, blue pen, black pen, red pen. You might just have crayons. You might have a Sharpie, a magic marker in your house. You just work with what you have. I'm drawing on the pencil lines, but it's not perfect. I don't care. I'm not worried about be, being perceived as perfect. Now I had his hand tilted this way. It's just a square. What I think I'm going to do is take that square and turn it just a little bit. From that, from that, To that. So I just turned it a little bit. There's his arm. It's this part of his arm. We're going to go down to the torso or his body. We're outlining the sweatshirt. I put a little curve on the bottom of that particular line. A little line down there. I'm changing things up a little bit. It's okay. Because when you're wearing a sweatshirt, there's a part that's ribbed, meaning it's got this pattern in it. It has elastic to hold it in place. So I'm gonna, I'll do that in a sec. We're gonna go, whoop, make a second line. You can if you want. You don't have to. We're gonna make the line out to his left knee. Line going down to his foot. There's his left leg. Line going out to his right knee. Line going down to his right foot. Now we're going to draw the feet. Which, remember, they're rounded rectangles, so they're ovals, almost. Don't worry. They don't come out perfect. No, it's nobody's business, and it doesn't matter. It's all fixable. There's, there's his sitter from the front. Um, we're going to go back here. I'm going to raise the line of his hoodie just a little bit because that's how it sits on us. There's his hood. There's his arm. I just drew his arm. I'm going to tilt that hand just a little bit, the lines on his hand, and make it a little bit shorter. Sometimes Jack has more detail than this. We're not going to worry about it today. I'm going to bring down, I'm going to make a little V by his neck. And then I think I'm going to give him a t-shirt right underneath. So that's that line. Here's the hoodie line. Here's the t-shirt line. Because his hoodie zips up. Give him that line. See that? That's how his hoodie zips up. 
I'm going to add some lines down here. This is where the elastic is. It's called ribbing or something like that. Okay. And give, put lines in his eyes to darken his eyes. Not quite dark enough. There we go. Look, he almost looks surprised. That's him. So there's Jack. Let's move on to, whoop, moving backwards. I just drew on my shirt. Uh, draw, going backwards, let's go to Joel. I think we'll start, we'll start right here on his face. He had the oval for his face. Gonna, I made the lines a little bit sharper as we were going along. So I've got the curved line here, sharp line down that way. Whoops. There's his nose, there's his jaw, this is coming down to his mouth, this little line here. We're going to come up the back of the head. I want to draw, I want to put in his ears. They're not as big as uh, Jack's, they're actually pretty tiny when you look at a squirrel. Okay, we're going to come down to the shoulder. His body. It's a line for his body. Now notice that I'm kind of changing things as we go along. I'm not sticking to all my original lines. In fact, I'm going to add something right now before I forget. I forget, Joel has a tail. He has a big, whoops, how do I want that to go? I'm going to draw that line. Um, he has a big fluffy tail because he's a squirrel. Squirrels have fluffy tails. Sometimes, no, that looks like it's on fire. So we're going to fix that. We're going to redo that. Wait a minute, his tail would be coming from roughly back there. Let's do, let me erase that line so it doesn't get too confusing. There's a line for his tail. That's the motion of the tail. Okay? It's like our feathers from the other day. But let's get back to the main part of the body, and then we'll do the tail. I just want to grab, I want to do the lines for his arm. Zuh. There's his arms, there's his hands, and they're basically squares. Line to his knee, there's the top of the knee, down to his leg, from the top of his knee to his foot. His foot is basically another rectangle, but we're not going to square it off, we're not going to finish it like that. So line then indicates he's sitting down to the edge of his foot. Let's go over to this knee. It's a little bit shorter than this one because it's at an angle. So we get the line to his knee, from his knee to his foot, and his foot. That was pretty easy, I hope. I'm going to do this. Because squirrels don't really have knees, legs like we do when they're all crumpled up like this. It looks like one big furry thing. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Why don't we um, do the tail? And again, I didn't plan this out, so let's see what we do. I'm going to just do random lines, just like we did on... The feather the other day, one of our feathers. We're going to have closed lines, open lines. Oh, squirrel just ran by my back door. Um, closed lines, open lines, all kinds of lines. They're just little lines. Okay. Squiggly lines.
don't. That's a tail. That's his tail. Let's do his hat. There's the top of his hat. One line, two line, three line. We're going to do the brim or rim of his hat where he folded it up. One line, two lines. See, it's sitting on his head. Those are curved lines. Connecting his ears, but not really, sort of. And three lines. One, two, three. And we'll do his eyes. Or actually his eye, yeah. There, just another oval. Now, Joel's hat has elastic in it, like Jack's waistband. So we're going to do the same type of lines. One, bump, bump, bump. Bum, bum. Here we go. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And let's do his eyeglasses, which is a curve, an oval, and another oval. He has old fashioned glasses. Very old fashioned. Okay, I want to cut him off because this is cut him off the page from Max because this is going to get too confusing for me. And I don't want to focus on anything other than Max. So I'm going to put Joel to the side, Joel over with Jack. Look at, oh, I forgot Joel's eye. We're going to fill it in with just lines, just like on the waistband, just like on the hat, but in that little circle. And it's not a ton of lines, it's just a few lines. All right, now we're back to Max. We're going to start at the head. There's the back of his head. We're going to do the arch to the front. And we're not going to cut the nose off short, sharply like we did on Jack. Cut this extra paper off. We're not going to cut the nose off sharply like we did on Jack. Turtles have more rounded heads, so we're going to keep it round, except for their little nose and mouth. That's pointed, like an egg. Almost like an egg, but a little bit sharper. If you look at an egg, one end is thinner than the other. There's his jawline. And we're going to come down to the neck. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six curvy lines. That's it. You can use more. It doesn't matter. You may have to, depending on your drawing tool. All right. Uh, now we're going to draw his tortoise shell. And I like to make the top with two little arches, like eyebrows. So it feels like our collarbone. So we can feel ourselves when we're drawing them. The, uh, drawing him, rather. The rest of his tortoise shell is going to be a square. So you've got cop. If you feel, if you feel your your up up towards the top of your chest up here, you got a collarbone. Oh, I don't know, collarbone. Anyway, collarbone, collarbone. All right, let's do his arms, which are just. One line, two lines, and a rounded bottom. That's it. And then his other hand is, I mean, his other arm, he, let me see, his other arm is going to be finished with a hand, which is basically a square or a rectangle, because it's holding something. and two lines going to his tortoise shell. Now look at this arm, it's fatter than that arm. It's a boo-boo and it's okay. It doesn't matter. 
Now we're going to have two legs coming down. I think I'm going to make one leg shorter than the other so it looks like he's walking. Okay. His eye, I'm going to leave it right where I originally drew it, unlike Jack. There's his eye. You can put it wherever you like. But I'm also going to put a line on his chest. And I should have done that in the beginning to tell me what his posture would be. But right down the middle of his tortoise shell, and then we're going to take our drawing tool, our pen, our marker, our sharpie, our crayon, whatever we have. That's the center of his tortoise shell. Where did we use the drawing tool from the other day? Oh my god, I've got such a mess here. I've got to clean it up. Oh, there he is. We also kind of want to give him a waist. Actually, tortoise shells have more lines in them, but I'm not going to worry about that. We're just going to give him a little bit of a waist. So it's a line and a few dots. Or you don't have to. Let's color, let's draw lines in his eye. And then we can start cutting him out. Okay. That's it. Alright, we're almost done with this part of the project. We're going to cut them out, but again, like in every other project, we're going to cut just outside the lines, leaving paper. You can see the paper outside the line. We're not going to cut right on the line. And we don't even have to cut it cleanly. It can be a little clumsy. I'm not good with scissors all the time. Sometimes I shake. So I'll do big cuts like that. Sometimes I'm feeling impatient, even when I don't mean to be. Oh, never cut towards your fingers. Yep. Oh, okay. Sorry, very clumsy. Sometimes I feel impatient and I get worried even when I don't mean to, so I'll shake. And it can be hard to cut. So I don't worry about it, because this, this is a fun project. That's what it's supposed to be. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Just like that. What? You know what? I think I'm going to cut his arm away from his body. All right, let's cut out Jack. It's going to be the same thing, leaving space between the black lines <clears throat> and your cut, what the, the edge that the scissors are making. <coughs> Pardon me. Now again, you can take this project, you can take all the characters when we're all done. You can erase them, erase all the pencil lines if you like. Or not. I'm not gonna. And then you can, you can copy them if you have a copier. Or someone nearby someone in your house has a copier. You may be able to copy it if you ask them nicely. And once you copy it, you've got a drawing you can keep forever. So you can color and color and color and cut and make them, use them in different scenes that we're going to build.
look at that. Yeah, you don't have to be a perfect cutter to get this to work. You don't have to. See how you can see the paper along the edges? That's what you want. All right, Joel, your turn. So we've got Max, Max, Jack, and Joel. What are they going to be doing? And how did they get there? Are they doing something they planned? Or did they bump into each other? And they all had the same idea? Did they see each other in the park doing the same thing? How did they get there? Maybe you can write a story about it. Maybe you can tell a story about it. And that's kind of the idea I've been working on for 13 years with these series of books. I'm just cutting around it. Notice I didn't cut out his ear. I'm going to cut around it now. Okay, we're almost done with this part of it. We'll come back to this, uh, come back and make another video, but I've got to shower, I've got to walk Bugsy, I have other things I have to do. And then we're going to finish this scene. We're going to finish building the scene. We're going to have these characters. Flying kites together. together, but they're separate. They're there to help each other if they need them. They need the help. They're each going to have a kite. And maybe it's kites that Joel has made. Maybe it's kite that kites, and this is what I like to think, is that Joel taught Jack and Max how to build. Maybe Joel is teaching them how to fly kites because we don't learn how to do things without other people helping. And we don't get good at it unless we have friends or a mentor or someone teaching us. Someone taught Joel, so Joel is teaching them. All right, we'll come back in a little bit. Um, or, <laughs> it's, yeah, after this commercial break. No, um, I'll make a second video um, after I've showered and I've done some more cleaning and I've walked Bugsy some more and um, gotten dressed which would be nice because I'm still in my jammies but I'll make a second video we'll build the scene and we're probably going to use this which is from another video but maybe we'll use this maybe we'll make another set of bushes maybe a tree but these guys are going to be flying apart uh, flying kites in the park. That'll be fantastic. I love this mug. Just as an aside, I love this mug. I was babysitting chickens for some friends when they went overseas. They went to several different countries. And um, the husband um, in, the, in this family went to the Globe Theater. The Globe Theater is a uh, um, 
the Globe Theater is the was Shakespeare's theater. And I love William Shakespeare. My favorite play is Hamlet. My favorite play in the whole world is Hamlet. And um, he built um, he built a theater called the Globe Theater. Look it up. It's pretty interesting. It's really interesting, actually. That one burned to the ground, but uh, in a melee. But it was rebuilt, and it still stands today. And uh, some of my favorite actors have gone through the Globe Theater and performed there on stage. Uh, they've been directors. Mark Rylance is the ex-director for the uh, Globe Theater. And I adore Mark Rylance, and I believe I'm babbling. And nobody but big, fat Shakespeare nerds will know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I love this mug. I love what it says. It says, I like this place. I like this place and willingly could waste my time in it. I like this place. I like Scooter Town. And I'm not wasting my time by being in it. It's making me a better person. All right. See you in a bit. Ciao. Ooh. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.